Hello guys, welcome to Learning Microcontrollers. In this video, I'm gonna give you a basic introduction to Micro C4 PIX UART library, and I will show you how you can send and receive characters using it. So let's get started. So guys, first of all, let's get to the Micro C4 PIX. This is the Micro C4 PIX I'm gonna use. It's version 7.2.0. You can use a higher version as well. So you click on File, New, New Project. Click on Next. Write the name of your project. I write UART2. And the crystal I have is 16 megahertz. I click on Next and Finish. So guys, this will lead you to this programming window like this. Before doing anything, press Ctrl S to save your file. Now guys, go to the right. On the right side of the screen, you have this library, library manager. You expand it or in the search bar, just write the name of the library you want. We want the UART library like this. So this is the UART library, not the soft UART library. So in the UART library, you have these commands UART1 data ready. This command is used whenever the data is being read, it will make sure that your Rx buffer is ready. And then you have this UART TX that whenever the data is to be transmitted that the TX buffer is empty. This will make sure that. And then you have UART1 read, this read and then you have this one UART1 read text. The difference between the two is that this is only for the character and this one is for the text. Similarly, you have the right one UART1 write and UART1 write text. The difference between the both is that this one is only for the character and this one is for the text. So in this tutorial, we are only going to deal with the character. So we are going to use the INIT command, read and write command, not the text command. So let's get started. So guys, first of all, click double click on UART1 INIT command like this. As you can see in the example here, let me show you. It says that initializes, copy this and place it in the one time loop here. Here you can see that it says initializes the hardware UART1 establishes communication at 9600 BPS. So this UART1 I and IT is the name of the command and this is the border, your desired border. Whatever the border you want to set, you will enter it here. It basically depends upon the sensor you are going to interface with your PIC microcontroller. Its data sheet says that it by default is at 115200, then you will make it 115200. So this will change the port rate. So in our case, we are going to use the 9600 by default and then give some initialization delay. So this is fine. Now guys, the next thing is we have our UART port initialized. When you will use this command UART1 INIT, your pin number TX and RX that is pin number 25 and 26 will auto get initialized. You don't have to use a trace command here to initialize them manually. Now we go to our forever loop. Now forever loop starts here and ends here. So guys, what I'm going to do is that I will use two LEDs. So whenever, whenever a, a character is sent from the terminal, virtual terminal to the pick, one LED will turn on when B is sent, other LED will turn on when C is sent, both the LEDs will turn on. And if any other character is sent, the, all the LEDs, both the LEDs will remain off. So for that purpose, we go to the Proteus, go to the right side in the devices, write down pick. 16FA77A to get the hardware. Here you go. Now take the LEDs, write down LED and go down. In the LEDs, you have these LEDs, self flashing. You can take any of these colors. I take red and green like this, and that's all. And now place the two LEDs wherever you prefer, and you can use any pin you prefer. I'm going to use a pin of a B0 for one LED like this. 
and B1 for the other LED like this. And from the other end, you will send them to the common ground like this. In case of actual hardware, remember to use a 220 ohm resistor with each LED. Now we go to these uh, uh, terminals and here we have this virtual terminal. Double click on it, place it anywhere on the screen you prefer. Now here you can see that pin number C6 and C7, TX and RX pin. They are auto initialized when we use a UART1 INIT command. In various picks like pick 18, F46, K22, you have two uh, UART ports, hardware UART ports. So you will have two uh, UART1 and UART2 commands in your library. But in our case, in pick 16, F8778, there is only one UART. So we only have UART1 available. So RX of your PIC 16 fa 7 a will go to the TX of the virtual terminal like this and TX will go to the RX like this. In this way connections are done. Now we will use this virtual terminal to send A, B and C to the PIC and these A, B, C and will be programmed in such a way whenever the A is received, this LED will turn on. When B is received, this LED will turn on. If C is received, bolt will turn on and if any other character is received, no LED will turn on. Now we go to our micro C for pick. Here, first of all, we use the read command. This one, UART1 read text. So, in the example here, you have this command. Now you can see that you paste it here. You can see that it already initialized UART1 data ready. This command. See, this command UART1 data ready. This command is used whenever you want to see that if Rx buffer is reading the data. Only then this loop will be executed. Else if you don't use this command, this loop will be executed for no reason slowing down your programming. So this is a very important command. UART1 data ready. If your Rx buffer gets some sort of data, only then this loop will execute. Now we will need a character uh, variable. So we write down char rec. That's all. This will store a single character. So we make it rec. This is enough. So rec will store the data received. Now we write the other code rec. Okay, if rec is double equal to a, in case the rec is a, then we initialize our two LEDs here. So write down trace b dot f0 equals to 0. It means pin number b dot f0 is now 0, is initialized as output. Because in case of Arduino, we use the pin mode command, pin mode output in case of pick micro C for pick, trace B dot F0 and this 0 means it's an output pin now. If it's 1, it means it's an input pin. So we copy this and also initialize the F1 pin. Now what the initial state of both the LEDs should be, they must be off by default. So we write port B dot F0 equals to 0. And initially, this LED must be off. It's like using this command is like writing digital write low in case of an Arduino. And then we use for F1 like this. Both the LEDs must be off by default. Give some initialization delay. Under will do fine. Now, guys, go down here. Copy these two. So, in case A is received, only one LED will turn on. We take it b dot f0 will be on. Now else if, if copy this b is received then the other LED will turn on and the first LED will turn off. Copy this and paste it here like this. Now here you can see that this LED turns off and this one will turn on. Now, in case C is received, copy this. Now, in case C is received, then both the LEDs will turn on. And else, in case all of these three characters are not received, then both the LED will remain off. So, make them zero. This is the code, guys. It is working in such a way that first of all, we initialize the UART pin using UART1 INIT command. Both the UART pins, TX and RX pins are auto initialized. Then guys, we initialize LEDs for demonstration purpose. And then this command UART data ready is used double equal to one. That in case the receive buffer gets the data, 
only then it should go inside this loop and it will read the data this command will read the character not the text only one character will be received and that character will be stored in this rec character variable and then we use our uh, you can say if else loop so if the command received is a then what it should do it should simply do is that it will simply turn on one led in case the command received is b it will turn on the other led if it's c it will turn on both the leds if none is received then both the leds will remain off so that's a simple code we build it we got some error oh okay we forgot a bracket here like this now we build it again and check for errors so again we because copied it so same problem again build it so this time no error now we go to our proteus and see what happens so guys i double click on this pick microcontroller crystal we are using a 16 megahertz i select the hex file i just created i go to the folder this is the file i created click ok run the simulation you will get this window when you have the virtual terminal first of all i write a see one led turned on because i wrote a here now i write b see the other led turned on now i write c see both the leds turned on now i write t see none is on i write u none is on i none is on now i write a see d1 is on i write b other led is on now i write c see the both the leds are on again i write a c one led b the other led c the other led in this way guys the characters work now we are simply reading the character and we can also write the characters as well see i write, again i show you i write t t is not in our list so else all the leds will remain off c q w e r t none is on i write a this led turns on when i write b the other turn on i write c both turn on so this is working as programmed so now we go back we add something in this code so in the micro c open it up what i write here is that whatever it receives it will also show it on the screen as well so we go to our this uart1 write command right now the difference is see i run the code whatever i am writing i cannot see here i want to see it as well that it should also send a data on the terminal that this character is entered so i write a led is on i know the a is received i write b the other led is on i write c both are on but i don't see them on this black screen here i want to see whatever it is received for that purpose we will use the uart write command now what the write command is going to do that whatever it is received it will also show it on the screen so we go to our micro c for pick here in the library you have this command uart1 write double click on it and in the example here not the text this command uart1 write whatever the data is you copy it and you place it here but the good practice is you also use this tx idle command this command will make sure that the tx buffer is having something in it only then it will execute this loop starting here and ending here if you don't use it doesn't matter but this will slow down your program but if you use it suppose that there is nothing in the tx idle buffer it will skip this and it will go on but in case if there is something in the buffer only then it will enter the loop now what it should write whatever the rec is so it will write the character whatever the character is written is received it will also send it on the screen now this is the difference these two commands are going to make uart1 tx idle double equal to 1 this will check if the tx buffer is available to write only then it will write the data on the screen using this command uart1 write what it should write whatever the rec that is the received data using this command so let's get to our micro c for pick and see do we also see the variables being entered i click on run okay now i write a see it shows a is written i write b 
C, it is showing that B is written. I write C. C, it is showing that C is entered. I write T. C, both the LEDs are off because T is not in our programming. I write Y, Z, P, I, O. Whatever I write, you can see that I can write anything I want. Q, W, E, R. But as to, un, until I write A, B, O, C, only then the LEDs turn on. A, C, one LED is on. Now I write B, the other LED is on. I write C, V, sorry. It's V, it's C. Both the LEDs are on. Now again I write A. Only this LED is on. I write B, the other LED is on. I press enter so I can reset. I write A, this LED is on. I write B, the other LED is on. I write D. See, when I write D, it's in else. Else both the LEDs are off. D, T, Y, U, these are not in our programming list. So only the command that will affect the LEDs are A for one LED, B for other, C for both. So that is because of this, these coding. Like we have only A here, B here, if A for this LED, B for this LED, and C for both the LEDs. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day.